saying about. And today is October 29th, 2022. Um, I would say this is week 11 um, for um, what we're doing. And I chose uh, to do regulation of the gastric phase for my uh, portfolio and presentation. Um, so just giving you a little bit of introduction to it. Um, but it has three phases. You have your cephalic phase, your um, gastric phase and your intestinal phase. At the cephalic phase, that's when um, you're smelling or tasting or seeing food and it um, activates um, the cephalic phase and uh, some signals run down the vagus nerve into the stomach and activate certain cells in the stomach that I will get to in just a second. Um, and then you have your gastric phase, which is all in the stomach. Um, and it's really, uh, it has three different uh, functions the stomach does. Um, First, it has it serves as a storage place so that um, the food at the time can only run through the intestines so fast. So while it's waiting to get passed through the intestines, uh, food sits in the stomach as a storage place. Um, two is to digest the food. So the uh, acidity of the stomach is uh, really low. It has a really low pH, or the acidity is really high. The pH is really low. Um, so it digests foods. Um, it breaks down um, polypeptides and um, carbohydrates and different things like that. Um, and then it also has a defense mechanism in the stomach itself, kind of twofold. First, the pH being so low, um, it can kill bacteria and viruses, um, it being so acidic. But it also has its own defense mechanism built into the mucosa so that um, there's a barrier between the acidity of the stomach and the cells um, so that the at the acidity or those protons don't move into the blood and cause an acidic pH in the blood, um, which would be really bad. So it serves a defense mechanism keeping the acid just in the stomach as well as killing um, any um, bacteria or anything like that in the stomach. Um, and then the third phase is the um, intestinal phase, and that's once the food runs into the intestines. Um, so once food enters the stomach, that's the start of the gastric phase. And so this next slide, um, is just a really nice overview, I think, of how the cephalic phase um, interacts with the gastric phase. So you have your food initiating um, at sight, smell, or uh, taste here, and then it travels to your medulla oblongata, those uh, signals, and then those signals pass through the vagal, uh, vagus nerve um, to the enteric plexus, which then goes to the post um, ganglionic neurons uh, that go to target cells and activate three specific target cells um, that the cephalic phase can activate. Um, there's also local neurons um, in the gastric uh, phase or just in the um, stomach area that um, can detect distension or when the stomach is getting bigger as well as it, it can detect the amino acids and peptides um, and those then also activate certain cells. Um, I just wanted to point this out. Um, the enteric neurons uh, innervate the um, stomach at two different uh, levels, it um, innervates it at the submucosa as well as the myenteric plexus. These yellow lines here are all of the enteric neurons. Um, so this slide I thought was a really nice slide of the overview of all the different cells involved in um, the gastric phase that are all found in the stomach. Um, the top two here are the mucus and the, um, or, or the mucus surface cell and the mucus neck cell. Um, they create mucus and then bicarbonate. That's what I was talking about with the defense mechanism. Um, those two together make sure that the, there's a physical barrier between the lumen and the epithelium. And the um, bicarbonate serves as that buffer so that the pH um, in, the, in the stomach can stay really acidic, but the pH surface of the epithelium is still around 7.2 or normal um, physiological levels. Um, the parietal cells are your main cells in the um, gastric phase. They release the gastric acid that make the stomach so acidic. So a lot of the regulators that um, we're going to talk about for the gastric phase all come down to somehow affecting the parietal cells, whether directly or indirectly. Um, but the parietal cells release the gastric acid that um, it can activate the pepsin, kills bacteria, and it just causes that as a very acidic um, pH level. Parietal cells also release intrinsic factor that complex with the vitamin B12 to um, make sure it can be absorbed in the intestines. The things that activate on the parietal cells are um, the enteric nervous system from the vagus 
um, nerve from the um, cephalic phase activate the parietal cells directly. Gastrin, which is released from G cells, also activate parietal cells. And histamine, which is released from the enterochromatin like cells, so the ECL cells, then go and activate the parietal cells to release the um, gastric acid. So since there's so many steps and different ways to activate the parietal cells, there's also lots of ways to regulate um, its activation and inhibition. Um, ECL cells uh, release histamine that then goes and activates the parietal cells. Um, G cells release the uh, lipase and pepsin. Lipase um, digests fats and, and pepsin um, digests proteins. Most of the fats aren't digested until the intestines though, um, but it starts the, uh, the digestion of fats. And then D cells release the somatostatin, um, or SS is its um, short term name, um, and it actually is a negative feedback loop, so the B cells are activated by the decrease in pH in the stomach or the acidity of the stomach, and so once D cells are activated, they release that somatostatin, and that goes and inhibits gastric acid secretion through a couple different um, mechanisms or pathways that I'll talk about on the next slide, um, and then the G cells are what are activated by the enteric nervous system, um, and those uh, G cells release gastrin, which then um, gastrin goes and stimulates the gastric acid secretion from the parietal cells. And gastrin also goes and activates and, uh, the ECL cells to release histamine. So um, this is a really nice, I think, slide that um, puts it all together. Basically, so you have your cephalic um, phase, the, the, the input from the vagus nerve here um, that goes and activates the G cells the ECL cells and the parietal cells, those are all activations from the cephalic phase. Um, and then you also have your activation of the enteric sensory neuron just within the gastric phase by amino acids um, or peptides, and it's also, um, there's some sensory neurons that are activated by the distension of the stomach as well, and those go and activate G cells. So G cells are only activated by um, the, basically the enteric nervous system or neurons, um, and then G cells go and um, produce gastrin. Gastrin can go and work on parietal um, cells directly. They also go and activate ECL cells to secrete histamine to then activate parietal cells to then um, release the hyd hydrochloric acid into the stomach lumen. Um, G cells are activated once that uh, acidity of the stomach decreases. Um, it goes and um, activates the enteric sensory neurons here that go and activate those G cells. Um, and here, once the, also the acidity is uh, lowered and the, P, uh, the pH is lowered or the acidity of the stomach is increased, um, the D cells are activated um, by that release of protons into the stomach. And those D cells uh, release somatostatin, which then inhibit G cells. The somatostatin inhibits parietal cells directly the somatostatin inhibits the ECL cells, and they inhibit G cells. So um, this is a really big negative feedback loop here. So once the again, acidity is increased in the stomach, D cells are activated and cause a negative feedback loop, um, which contributes to the regulation of the gastric phase. Um, this is also, I thought, a really nice slide, just because um, it kind of just summarizes the parietal cells are your main cells that are um, involved in the gastric phase, they release the hydrochloric acid into the stomach lumen, like seen on the right here. Um, the, AT, the proton potassium pump here, um, or the ATPase, is the main factor that's releasing the protons into the um, stomach. And so there's a, actually a proton pump inhibitor is the classification of pharmacological drugs. That if you are hypersecreting acid into your stomach and have too low of a pH, um, your physician or somebody might give you a proton pump inhibitor. Um, another classification of drugs they might give you if you're over secreting um, acid is um, hydrogen receptor antagonists here. Um, histamines act on parietal cells at the hydrogen um, or H2 receptors, and so inhibiting those they inhibit the effects of histamine, which would then um, cause a decrease in the hydrochloric acid release from parietal cells. So we already talked about how D cells release nanostatins that go and inhibit a whole bunch of things like parietal cells directly, they inhibit the ECL cells, they inhibit the gastrin cells, um, or the G cells that release gastrin, and uh, D cells, the release of somatostatin also inhibits G cells. 
Um, and so then lastly, the, this is the connection between the gastric phase and the intestinal phase. Um, the intestinal phase uh, is reached once chyme is, enters the um, small intestine. So once the food is broken up into the stomach, it's broken up into a soupy mixture called chyme, and that enters the intestine, and now we're in the intestinal phase. Um, the, once chyme enters the small intestine, your enteric nervous system is activated, and it goes back and inhibits acid secretion. Um, to slow down the gastric uh, digestion and emptying, it, it slows down the motility of the gastric phase. Um, but lots of other things also go back and inhibit it. So once acid reaches the intestine, secretin is released, and secretin goes back and inhibits acid secretion. Um, the uh, fats and proteins, once, once they enter the chyme, CCK is released, that goes back and inhibits acid secretion, and so does GLP-1. So does GI, uh, GIP goes back and inhibits acid secretion, and um, there's this endocrine cell that also inhibits gastric motility. Um, in addition to the enteric nervous system and secretin um, inhibiting the gastric motility and the acid secretion. So um, lots of things go into um, regulating the gastric phase. Um, the cephalic phase basically activates the gastric phase and um, certain processes in the intestinal phase go back and inhibit the gastric phase or just slow it down so that the stomach can be used more for a storage area than a digestion area um, to give the intestines time to break down um, the chyme and absorb its nutrients. Um, so that is my presentation on regulation of the gastric phase. Okay.